are live. So my name is William North. I'm here with Professor Green, of Texas Southern University. Uh, thank you, Professor Green, for joining us today. Oh, for, you're welcome. Yeah, for the Sacred Spaces program. Um, and really in this program, we try to engage artists in their studios, in their communities, and to talk to them about what drives their creativity, what drives their, their process. Um, and so with that, Professor Green, I wanted to start by asking you just real quickly, in terms of the communities you've lived in, what role, if any, have these communities played in the development of your artistic practice? Well, I think um, just kind of off the top of my head, I would say a lot, <laughs> um, because I think artists work you know, as a result of their own exp individual experiences. Um, and that's where their work comes from. So with me, you know, my experiences have been, I guess you would say in different communities. Like I was an army kid growing up. My father was in the service in the army and we moved around quite a bit. Um, so, you know, for a while there, it was like every two years we'd move, you know, and mainly it was, um, well, I remember living in Germany and then living in like the United States along the East Coast, you know, so, so that was like, you know, my earliest memories as and on through high school, I guess. And then thinking about college, you know, I went to college as an art major. Um, so back then, you know, you were like, I guess it's not too different nowadays, but you had to take these art history classes. Mm. You know, and, and so, but back then it was 100%, well, probably 99% um, European art history. So I have all of that knowledge that's been kind of drummed into me. Um, well, I guess it's not all in knowledge, it's what I can remember, you know, while I was awake in class. So so I, I think that part is very important to me in terms of myself as a individual artist. And then there's, you know, my actual environment being, uh, African American um, and teaching at an HBCU, you know, I think a lot about that whole African American side. And that is my identity. You know, when you look at me, you say, oh, he's a black man. So so I, I that comes into my work a lot. I think about um, you know, just kind of like what is my, how I would define my role, my, my identity. And it's not like there's one way, it's just like thinking about that in today's society, you know, if that makes any sense. So. No, it does, no, it does. Thank you for that, actually. So also I wanted to uh, talk to you about your studio practice and the role the studio plays, your studio in particular, in the kinds of works that you make. Because I've heard a lot of stories about, about your studio and, you know, <laughs> things about, no, I've heard some, some, really? some people, yeah, about that you, you have this amazing studio. So I wanted to oh, talk, I, know. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the role that your studio plays for, for your practice. Is it a place where you just throw around ideas, it's experimentation, is your, laboratory, just how does it work for you? Well, it's like my workspace, you know, so it's not all that, I don't, well, you know, I, I look at other artist studios, you know, and looking at like big names, like, you know, Kerry James Marshall or, or Sam Gilliam, or, you know, just all these, you know, big name artists and they have like warehouses. <laughs> so my actual studio physically, it's about 
30 feet long by 13 feet wide. So it, and it's basically a um, renovated garage space. You now I live in an old home. It's like, um, it was built in the forties. Um, and it, it's like a one story, you know, old house. And so when we moved in, I claimed this space. <laughs> As, as like my studio and and I've just kind of turned it into my workspace you know so I'm I um have all the stuff that I really want to work with here you know and that of course is like paint drawing materials canvas paper you know um a small press for printing mm. and then kind of a a uh, workshop area where I can build things like stretchers or frames or whatever I think I need to build, you know? So, so that's pretty much it. It's like the, I think of it more as like the basic, you know, work, work, working space. And I, I don't like to classify myself as, as a painter, but basically I am, you know, I, I majored in painting back in school but I always loved drawing, you know, and drawing always came easier to me. So um, the reason I majored in painting was because I needed to learn how to paint, you know, and oh. I thought, oh, I'll major in it and then I'll learn, you know, which you it go. didn't work out that way, but that's <laughs> my thinking. <laughs> Cause it takes like a lifetime to learn how to paint, you know, so, or to make art, I should say. So my approach is basically I, you know, want to create an image and however I think is the way it should look, I try that, you know, so, so there's always paint, there's always something drawn, there's always something, well, not always, but usually there's like painting mixed with drawing, mixed with printmaking. And it's just, that's just kind of the way I work. Um, it's not like um, people have asked me about my process and I can't really say, okay, it's, I do this first, I do that, and then I do that, you know, mm. just, you know, I have an idea and then I think about it and try to sketch it out. So I get an understanding of like composition and color and all that stuff. And I just go from there, I like mess up. And then I try again, mess up, try again. So it's like that. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so I had a follow-up question to that. You mentioned that, again, working at uh, Texas Southern University at an HBCU, uh, you've been teaching there for many years. I was interested in your travels to Tanzania, um, your work there, your teaching practice there, uh, and then the role that the community played. Uh, were there particular behaviors that you notice in your students. Um, how was that experience being transported from, you know, your community in the United States? And of course, you travel, uh, lived in other countries, you mentioned Germany, but how was that experience um, traveling from the U.S. into Tanzania? You know, I've been to Tanzania before, just mm -hmm. that kind of experience. And how, what roles uh, might that experience have played the spatial relationship played to in the development of your art? Well, I it's ongoing. <laughs> um, so I started going in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and as part of the uh, study abroad program here at TSU. Mm -hmm. So I was a faculty leader and I guess still am. Well, once it starts up again after this whole COVID thing. but. Um, you know, and, and it was always, well, being a faculty leader, it's kind of like you learn as you go, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you're, you're, in a way, you're like a chaperone, but you're also like facilitating the group and trying to get them to um, acknowledge and understand that, okay, this is a different culture, you know, there are different um, things that happen in terms of like society and just norms and all of that. 
Um, and that's not like it's a bad thing. It's like a good thing, actually. So, so in 2007, I received a Fulbright um, teaching research grant, and I was able to stay there for a year and teach at the University of Dar es Salaam um, in their art department. And that was, that whole year was very, I guess, interesting, I could say. <laughs> um, um, there were differences and similarities, you know, in terms of teaching. Um, like the department was set up basically the same, you know, they're, they combine like music as well as theater and art in one department. And it was in like one area of the campus. So at TSU, well, music, when I first started music, theater and art were in the same department, you know, and now it's just theater and art. Um, but they're in two different places. So, so the setup was the same. What was really different to me were the students. Yeah. Like the students in Tanzania were very, they were very eager to learn like what an American artist teacher could show them, you oh. know, like, like they were hungry for any kind of tips, any kind of like knowledge, you know, like, um, you know, anything I showed them, because all I had basically was my laptop. Yeah. Anything I showed on my laptop, whether it was another artist or whether it was like a presentation on a technique or something, they were like, wow, this is great. You know, I want this. <laughs> they were, they were also like, very, very, um, you know, I guess like respectful, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of like me being a teacher. And that, that was very surprising <laughs> because um, it's not that students here aren't that way. It's just that it was different, you know? Um, so like I kept saying, okay, well, you need to go to an art store and get supplies. And of course, in Dar es Salaam, there were no art stores. <laughs> so, and I don't think there are even today, um, but there are artists. And I asked around and there was a place in a major market in the center of downtown um, where you could buy artist supplies like this. Um, it was a hardware store basically, but um, the owner would go to Kenya, you know, to get his supplies for a store, but he would also bring back art supplies like paints, like oil paints and acrylic paints and brushes and watercolors and whatever else, you know, um, he could bring that he thought he could sell, you know. And, so I said, okay, well, we should take a trip, you know, to go get art supplies. Yeah. And the students were like, you can't go. You're American. <laughs> You're an old man. You're an American. You can't go. And it's like, why not? It's just a store, you know? You could cool. go during the daytime, you know? <laughs> It'll be safe. And, <laughs> and so what they did was, well, we have to take a bus, you know? Um, well, it wasn't a bus. It was like, a series of buses, basically. Well, they weren't buses, they were minivans because there was no public transit, but anyway, like taxis. Um, so they took me, basically. They were like, okay, we're going to take you, you know, and you just tell us what we should buy. <laughs> so, so I was like really surprised by that, you know, just, and they did. They like took me there and then brought me back to campus and we're like, you know, we're escorting Professor Green <laughs> to the place and then back. You know, so, so I was, they didn't have much there, you know, but 
um, in terms of like supplies to buy. It was nothing like here, you know. Um, but you could buy like the basic colors and and um, brushes, you know, and back and some. I think he had canvas or well canvas board, um, and then you could get um, gesso to prime, you know. So just just like the essentials, you know, nothing really spectacular. So so that was like a real experience. And then the other thing was like the critique sessions, you know, because the students were just so, I'm used to having like a critique be a discussion mm -hmm. and there was no discussion. <laughs> it was like I was supposed to deliver a lecture on what they had done, you know? No. <laughs> so, so that was really awkward, you know, but I'm more used to like the way I guess I was taught, which was to, you know, you'd have a critique by discussing your efforts, your work, you know, mm -hmm. like um, the problems you have with whatever the assignment was and that kind of thing. And they were just like, no, we don't do that. No, <laughs> you tell us. <laughs> so, and so that was pretty much it. But you know, if I had to think of how it affected my artwork, that whole experience, I think it was just the difference in cultures. You know, just I think of Tanzania as being like a place where, you know, you have all this history. People don't realize the amount of history that's there. You know, it goes back to like the beginning of time <clears throat> or the beginning of civilization, you could say, you know. Um, and you find examples of that, you know, in the, like the different, um, well, back then there was a stark difference between like uh, more traditional dress and then what they called Western dress, you know, which was like, and nobody, you know, dressed like, you know, a hip black American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, um, they were they were always like, okay, well, press shirts and you know slacks and all of that. You know, these were students on campus. You know, so so, but I was really impressed with like the way like, the Islamic culture was able to kind of blend in with the African and then how that was accepting of like Western and what they call Indian or Asian influences. Yeah. Um, because I was thinking, well, you know, basically I look back at the United States and all the problems that are here that are yeah. ongoing, you know, and never get resolved. And then you look at a place like Tanzania and, you know, you have like these merging of cultures or different religions or whatever you want to call them that goes back like, you know, to the 14th, 15th century or mm -hmm. even earlier. So, <laughs> so, you know, and you see it like in the, not only in the people, but in the architecture and mm -hmm. you know, the way things are just done and even the language you think of like Swahili as a blue, mm -hmm. all these different. I'm still languages. working on my key Swahili. I just yeah. say. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, that's, so I try to like, you know, in, in my work, I'm, I'm, I'm finding that I'm looking at that more and more, that whole kind of, that experience and that side of it. And, I can't say specifically like how I, you know, include that in the work, but but it's there somewhere. Yeah. No, that's powerful. I mean, Tanzania, you know, again with all of its challenges, um, one of the things that I found from traveling there was again seeing people that were obviously so different in terms of how they looked and how they dressed. And yeah. just how they navigated that space with one another and in terms of their community. 
And yeah. uh, it, it was it was so unique because I, I just remember going to the mall and seeing people that were, you know, people that were obviously Dinka from people that were Kikuya or, you know, just these different, right. obviously different ethnic groups. But, and then they had different religions. And so there was this complexity, but how they were able to, to handle that is something yeah. that um, I think uh, we could take with us as a, you know as a people here and as a larger country. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think we can learn a lot just by looking at that, you know, that idea um, and that history too. You know, because you know when we we as African Americans we're so used to looking at West Africa. Mm-hmm. You no, know, you don't. There's a tendency not to look at like how the continent has has evolved and grown, you know, and influenced other places. Well, yeah, I had a, just a couple of other questions for you. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, just but thank you for that. Um, just, just you know, your your generosity in terms of just sharing your experiences. Um, but yeah, just two other questions that I have in terms of your time. Working in Houston, working mm-hmm. at Texas Southern, um, what changes have you seen in your students, uh, if, if there are any that you would know? And then the impact that might have on your artistic practice. So it's kind of a two-way question with that. Like this, if, if there are changes in the community of students that you're with um, in Houston, that you're based here, and then if there are any you know, if the implications of that for your work. I don't know. That's that's hard to say because I don't. I don't really think about students changing. <laughs> so, you know, I I just think okay, your students, yeah. But I mean, they're always well. Hopefully, they're learning. Mm-hmm. You know? And I well, I like to think that. You know, their experience at Texas Southern opens a door for something else, you know, like, like, um, so if they're an art major, you know, I, well, I will tell them often, well, this is like the beginning, (laughs) because I think one of the things that students expect is, is like to instantly know something, you know? Um, and it just doesn't work that way. I think, you know, it, it's like, well, okay, now you understand this technique, but you can take it so much further. Mm-hmm. So, so I think um, hopefully that's what they get, although I'm not sure they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it just kind of, it depends actually on the student, I think, you know. Um, so when I was a student, you know, we used to talk about things in terms of like cycles, like spirals and cycles. Mm-hmm. Like, like you would do something, you'd work on something for like a whole semester, whether it was like a printmaking project or you know, a painting or whatever, you know. Um, And then at the end of the semester, you know, it could be like one thing, but you could see the progress or usually like your peers could see the progress because we all work, you know, in the same space together. You know, so, so you got to know each other. So, you know, where I might be frustrated doing something, trying something, you know, someone else could point out, well, yeah, you might still be having problems, but you got better at this part of it, you know? Mm. So that was like the cycle part of things, you know? So I guess it was kind of like, you know, shining a light on something, <laughs> trying to make it positive and, and, you know, to help you grow. So I, I think, you know, I think my own practice is kind of like that. Um, like I'll try it may be a different content or a different, um, you know, maybe color scheme or something, you know, like that. But um, 
the ideas and the way I do things are going to stay the same pretty much. You know, I just get more comfortable with putting it together. You know, you could, and, and hopefully it's getting better, you know, with each piece that I make. So, because I tell students, well, if you could do it right, you know, then what's the point of doing it? <laughs> Why keep making the painting, you know? If the first one is going to be right, then you may as well stop after the first one. <laughs> so, because it's perfect, you know. Right. So, um, they don't believe that, but <laughs> yeah, they can just make one perfect drawing. I mean, that, that's a challenge that I think we have sometimes. It's like, yeah. I know when I'm painting, it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to. That would stop me from painting sometimes because I, I think, okay, I'm, I'm frustrated here and. I, I, if I just got this book on portrait painting, or if I just got this, um, if I watched this video of, of how you use watercolor, I would be able to make the perfect, perfect painting. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then it, again, you have to practice. It's, it's one of those things you have to practice. You might learn this technique, but then you can do it in different ways. And yeah. a lot of times, especially the student, you just get frustrated. You, you want to rush the process. So right. That you, automatically you're there because you were the you were the best artist at your school and now yeah. you want to you want to get to the university get to grad school you're like i, I want to show them what i can do yeah. i'm here to get this mastery <laughs> but it's a lifetime process you know, right uh -huh. that to me. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah well i i usually in my beginning class i have people you know really like diligently trying to well this happens a lot like I'll say, okay, we're going to do this still life painting, you know, because, and I'll set up a still life and I'll have people sit around the table and draw it, you know, um, like sketch it in their sketchbook. And then I say, okay, take that sketch and then put it on canvas or on a larger scale, you know, and they proceed to make a drawing on that larger scale, you know, and like complete with like the technique and the shading and all of that stuff. And I'm like, you know, this is a painting class. <laughs> you need to start painting. And they're saying, well, I got to get the drawing right. Now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this drawing is fabulous. <laughs> it's like, no, you're going to, if you keep drawing and then you do the painting, you're going to just cover up the drawing. You know, so what's the point of that? Just start painting. <laughs> and then finally, I'll say, look, it's going to be wrong. You know, it's just. You just have to put down a mark. You have to put down a color and it's going to be wrong and you're going to see it's wrong. And then you just fix it. You correct it. And that, that's how you proceed. You're just making corrections. You know? So once they get over that, then they're like, oh, yeah, OK, I can I can manage this now. You know, but otherwise it's like, well, they're just like stuck. <laughs> like. Like, and they're not really starting the painting. You know, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing in the class. It could be a beautiful drawing, you know, but the fact is you have to do a painting. <laughs> so throw some color on there. That's, that's actually, that's what um, some of the students say is like, yeah, Professor Green, he wants you to work big and he wants you to just throw the color, <laughs> just throw it. <laughs> so. And it's like, well, just go ahead and start, you know. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, just well, start and realize it's not going to be perfect, you know. Right. It's, and you just have to work on it. So, so that's what I do, and that's what I hope the students learn, at least for me. I mean, I hope they learn like technique and you know color theory and all of that. But you know, they they if they want to continue making art, they have to also understand that part of it, you know, that it's, it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to keep fine tuning this thing, you know. Mm. It's, a, it's a continually evolving. Uh, thank you for that. You, you actually covered that, that, that question that I wanted to get at in terms of um, just that process of teaching what you want to instill in them, that tradition that you want to instill in them? Well, I hope they, I mean, I hope they learn that about the whole 
process of painting, but mm -hmm. I also want them to learn, like it drives me nuts when they say, oh yeah, I'm, you know, they could be talking about the Mona Lisa and I'll, I'll be like, okay, well, what's the artist? Who's the artist? You know, and I'll be like, I don't know, but you know that painting of that lady? <laughs> 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 I'm like, who is the artist yeah okay and like, i don't know and i was like look it up you know, <laughs> you know i don't know how <laughs> you need to know the artist's name you know so that that's like a it's it's almost like a pet peeve that they don't pick up on that like the importance of like knowing artists and knowing the names like they can remember the something about the artwork but they don't you know remember those names so so i want them to know that part of it too like know the history you know no no like okay if you're looking at like the renaissance or you're looking at like cubist or you're looking at like african-american you know know the artist names you got to get to we got to get to this point where we know the practitioners if we know yeah. the practitioners of sports this is our field yeah. so then there's this like if I, if I know who's on the houston rockets squad which seems to be changing daily i should yeah. know the people who are practicing in my field absolutely yeah yeah so so i really hope that they get that you know okay but you know i just want to thank you again for your time i didn't want to take up too much of your time but um, I have one last question for you. Oh, and yeah. This has to do with the future. So uh, those people that are visiting University Museum will see amazing pieces that you put together, beautiful use of color, the figures, and then as well as some, um, just a, a lot of, there's prints, there's prints, there's language, there's things that you do there. Uh, where do you see your work going um, in the future? Where do you see, if there's any projection you can make, what are your interests now? How do you see that shaping your work going forward? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to keep working, you know? I, I would really like to just have, you know, um, more time to create pieces and more finished pieces, I guess. Yeah. Um, and just do that. Um, I always have ideas, you know, um, but I don't always have the time to work out those ideas the way I want to, you know, so, or on the scale I want to. You know? so, um, so in the future, I would just like to have more time to paint. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, more time to make artwork, yeah, so. Um, I don't, I don't really think in terms of like, you know, content so much in terms of like projecting down the road. I think, well, you know, occasionally I want to try something, you know, whether it's like a new material or, or or um, a technique maybe, you know, a new medium, I should say, or, or technique. Um, but, you know, usually when I'm working on something, I come up with an idea for something else. Okay. It's kind of like, oh yeah, I could do that, you know? And then I'll forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, like I'll think of it again, and I'll write it down and I'll start doing sketches and then eventually it becomes an artwork. So that that's just kind of how I, how I work. Um, and I just kind of believe, well, since I'm making it, you know, some kind of way it all fits together. It may not look like it does, but it, it does. So, so um, there's like that continual thought that runs through it, you know, so, so that's, that's what I see myself doing, you know, as long as I'm able to, so. <laughs>